Did you know that in Marvel Zombies, the zombies are fully sentient? Their brain stays intact to the point where they could negotiate and reason with themselves that they're no longer hungry. Along with that, did you know in Marvel Zombies, the superheroes almost all succumb to the virus? Up into the point of only the robots being still functional, like Viv or Vision. And did you know that in Marvel Zombies, Galactus has died twice. We have one where the superheroes work together to consume him as he visits Earth, and the second where the zombie spawn was due to a hive mind breeder planting eggs inside of his corpse. That then transitioned to well, eternal or supernatural hive mind like beings that could imbue the galaxy's power into the next creatures that they consumed. And finally, did you know that the concept of a zombie apocalypse actually aligns really well with what Galactus is doing himself? You see, Galactus is this godlike creature, as close to a deity as you have in the Marvel Universe, and he is constantly hungry. He's not a world conqueror or a destroyer. He's not like Thanos who wants to snap existence into forcible peace. Instead, he's hungry. All he wants to do is consume. And so, naturally, creatures birthed from him or his remains would have the same insatiable desire. Hello, hello, welcome to Quackalope. Thank you for being here. Today we're talking about Marvel Zombicide. Yeah, I know. My mind is still blown as well. Today we're going to dig into 10 essential elements, 10 essential factors or predictions that Simon has to include when it comes to a Marvel Zombicide franchise if they at all want to stay loyal to the original text and give us a world that's going to be fun to play in. Because Marvel doesn't treat zombies like the same classic virus-filled, helter-skelter, human civilization crumbling. There's actually a lot of things that they need to do different for Marvel Zombicide to be not only the best Zombicide that's ever existed, but also true to the Marvel Universe. So let's dig in, let's talk predictions, let's analyze everything we currently know. And I do have a stockpile of notes over here so that I don't have to try to memorize all the facts and details I want to share with you. These are going to be things that I'm looking for, things that relate back to the actual world of Marvel Zombies, zombies and uh, things I think would just be really cool to see in Marvel Zombicide. Let's start with the core concept. Let's start with what we know so far. Well, this is Galactus. Like I said, oh, a world eater, a consumer of life, this insatiable hunger. And right now, in Marvel Zombies, we've only seen him appear two, maybe three times in the current comic book series. The first was when he visited an Earth, one of these multiverse worlds, where everyone had already been consumed by this virus. It's one of the very first iterations of Marvel Zombies, and in that scenario, he didn't last long. The Silver Surfer got consumed first, and then he got taken down and consumed. But I don't know if he turned into a zombie or not. I think there is one evidence of him existing in another frame or picture down the road, but he's not a major player in the future storyline. He just loses, and the zombies themselves imbue themselves with his power by consuming him. Which means... Those zombies then spread across the multiverse, conquering, taking over, and consuming or filling their insatiable hunger, not like he does, which is just by showing up and slowly draining the life out of everything, but instead by forcefully eating uh, and consuming everything around. The, the second version is a version where the hive is actually planted inside of his floating corpse. He's turned into a starship. Yeah, he's hollowed out and turned into a starship, and the zombies actually spawn from him. So this statue is a little bit weird when it already comes to the lore and the way that we play. Marvel 
treating him as a functional, sentient, grasping creature is something that we have seen, but we haven't seen focused or primarily the feature in the past. And I theorize that there has to be two core ways, at least, to play Marvel Zombicide. I think, and I fully believe, that Marvel Zombicide will function as a game that allows you to play as heroes fighting zombies in the classic Zombicide style, but also, more and most importantly, as zombies fighting heroes. As functional creatures doing their very best to take down someone like Galactus. You see, Dice Tower has a version of this miniature and model, if miniature is the right word, where everything is there and he's not a zombie. Meaning there's a way to operate or engage with this character that doesn't require him to be turned. I'm theorizing that there's two ways to play. In the, in the comic books, the zombies are functional creatures. Not only does their mind continue operating, but their personality stays and remain, and they're able to make decisions and partner with and against the surviving human populations in order to aid their survival or work against them to consume them. With, of course, caveats, things like Hulk being someone who's very hard to convince not to consume everything around. I'm theorizing that Marvel Zombicide has to function in both ways. You get to play as the zombies, and you get to play as the heroes before they're zombies. I want to see a scenario where I, running a squad of converted zombie superheroes, take down Galactus, the world eater, by eating him. Yeah, sounds about right. Let's continue digging in. I want to talk about the things that I would like to see. So we'll start spinning through this just in the direction that we have, and I'm going to list a ton of information as we go. First off, I personally, selfishly, would love to see a scenario of this as a comic book campaign. Open up the book and flip through pages and start playing through this open world dialogue with every bit and piece of the Marvel Universe explored, and do it as a campaign. We already have a history and a precedent of Marvel creating or Simon creating a functional comic book series, and I would love to see that branch off into this IP as the way that you unveil new storylines and progress through some sort of narrative. Second, the superheroes have to become zombies. Now, I'm theorizing that you get to play as both, that you have the opportunity to play both as zombie Spider-Man and as normal Spider-Man, because that's exactly what the comic books do. Their brains still work, they still function as people, and as long as they wait long enough to subdue their own hunger, which is a mental game, they work together with the humans to defend and fight and protect against other zombies. But not just that. Instead of infinite spawning hordes and minions of zombies, the comic books, sure, show populations twisting and turning into zombies, but there's no great threat. There's no big fatty. There's no abomination. Instead, the biggest threat in this world are the superheroes themselves. So, when you're thinking about who is going to be the fatty, think about the Hulk and She-Hulk and his son, and think about all the ways they can twist them into be the creatures and the villains that you're fighting. When you're thinking about who's going to be the runners or the hive, I don't know. I'm very, very curious how they're going to pull this off because we can have some grunts and some people and some mobs and an overwhelming presence, but anytime a superhero actually gets taken down in the Marvel world, it is by a horde of zombie turned superheroes taking them down. So does the game play interchangeably? with random spawns, with snaps that go on the bottom? Do you have two versions of each character, and depending on what role you're playing, they take different sides? I'm just not sure. But I think it has to be integrated in some way. You need to be able to fight zombie Spider-Man on the table. You need to be able to fight and go up 
against zombie Iron Man or the entire squad of Guardians of the Galaxy, you can't just be the hero fighting heroes. So, continuing down, this is going to exist in the multiverse, which is super exciting because it means that we're opening up the world to a ton of different IP characters, a ton of different world-twisting series, and some of the ones that I would love to see are going to be as follows. First off, Miles has to be in this. He actually isn't in any of the zombie side uh, or any of the uh, Marvel zombie comic books so far that I've seen, but you can't bring the world together clashing into this chaos without pulling Miles. Along with that, I'd love to see Weapon Omega or Old Man Logan. Now, these are going to be two different versions of Wolverine. Weapon Omega is going to be a godlike Wolverine who's the most powerful in existence. He survived a nuclear bomb and went on to conquer the world. Uh, old Man Logan is going to be the old version of Wolverine. Now, as a subpar, or a, uh, an extra plot, they could have the version of Wolverine that was perpetually consumed by zombies for an extended period of time until his regenerative healing stopped working effectively and he went blind, but he might not be as fun to play with. I would love to see Hyperion. Uh, Hyperion is going to be a superhero counterpart or a Superman counterpart for the Marvel Universe and is actually featured very heavily in the Marvel zombie world. So if you're not fighting against this superhero or Superman style creature, I'd be disappointed. I'd love to see Gwen Poole. This is going to be Deadpool and Gwen Stacy mashed up in a multiverse mix. It is twisted, it is wacky, and I'd love to see some weird characters that we have yet to see pull into this collaboration actually shown off and featured. We also have to see Gladiator. There's really no option. He's such a central figurehead in the Marvel so, the Marvel zombie world, that if he's not there, I'll be incredibly shocked. Fantastic Four is one of the central components, of course, with Galactus being here and the Silver Surfer being the usher of Doom. We're going to see the entire squad and even maybe some side characters pulled in as features or featurettes into this uh, world. And the one that uh, I think they have to have, because they'd be misbranding if they didn't, Chewie, you know the cat that has an infinite vacuum of space inside of it that can swallow everything with giant uh, tentacle mouths? Well, Chewie, as far as I can tell, has never fallen to the zombie plague. Instead, she just swallows a multitude of robots and other zombie creatures and actually does a lot to help in the process. I want the ability to use other superheroes' weapons and abilities, and I also want some specific zombicide versions of weapons that we need. Of course, we'll have Thor's hammer, but there's some uh, Easter eggs that I'd love to see. I'd be very, very disappointed if we didn't see them. First off, Wasp's head. In one of the earliest zombicide comics, Wasp actually becomes one of the uh, counterparts or aides to the surviving factions. After her head is dismembered, she's unable to consume, and she realizes as the very first creature, the very first zombie that realizes that the hunger doesn't have to control them. I would love a item or piece of gear that included that, or at least a reference to that. Tony Stark's bottle of whiskey and, of course, nanite grenades. So there's one version of this where you run into drunk Tony Stark. He spits up in a zombie's face and it starts melting, realizing that the nanites in the whiskey that he was drinking are actually attacking and consuming the, well, I suppose, the twisted flesh of the zombie. It's a very good defense mechanism. And instead of Molotov cocktails or grenades that blow up big hordes and spawn regions, we're going to have to have nanite grenades. It's really the only reasonable option. It's the only attack or defense that they effectively found. They actually imbued Sandman at one point with these nanite particles and allowed him to wash over the zombie masses attacking them with uh, technology. And so, if they have grenades or fire, that's not how you take care of superhero zombies. You do so with nanite grenades. We need a whole series of custom scripted massive boss fights. Of course, we're going to be fighting Galactus. We have to be, uh, and I think 
I'd be very disappointed if there wasn't a version where we are actually killing him with zombies. But, whatever the case, I also want to go head-to-head -head with Thanos, although he hasn't been directly featured in the zombie storyline. Or Maestros, the most powerful version of Hulk to ever exist. There's a lot of subplot characters, both good and bad, that I would love to see featured here. Now, another thing to keep in mind, <clears throat> something that is uh, weird and twisted about the Marvel zombie world that Simon has to identify and utilize, is the fact that heroes and villains join forces in this storyline. They don't operate as separate entities, and the wars between nations and peoples actually stop. There's still some bickering and inner fighting, of course, but for the most part, we should be able to play as every villain you can imagine fighting against these zombie hordes, and vice versa. Every good guy you can imagine should be able to fight against us. If they do that right, if they do that well, it's going to be really fun to take control of and utilize every evildoer's power and ability. I would like a series of self-contained adventures that mix and match with each other. Guardians of the Galaxy, Fantastic Four, I want the Avengers. You see, in the world, in the storyline of Marvel Zombies, there's little pockets where things start to crumble in various regions of the world and regions of the galaxy. And I want to see and play out that. Along with that, I want our locations to go not just on Earth. We need to go galactic with this. I want some locations that are New York City or Boston, wherever you want on Earth. But then we need to feature Atlantis. We need to feature Galactus's body, where some of the fighting actually takes place. We need to feature the Limbo Realm, where they trap and imbue everyone in until they want to release these hordes of zombies. There's a lot that we need to do, and it can't all be set on Earth. I think you need to have the opportunity to play and experience this in every viable location, meaning the tiles, the locations, and the way the modules and systems work have to be widespread. What's the best way to do that? We'll do it as self-contained separate modules where I take control of all of Guardians of the Galaxy, I play with them until we crumble, and then when we crumble, I get to play with them as zombies? Something like that. I want an infinite rush mode where all it is is hero after hero, zombie after zombie, flooding onto the board while you and a squadron of your people fight until you die. Give me victory points at the end, let me beat my own score. But in the Marvel world, there's very little escape. You shouldn't win often in this game. You should fall, you should crumble. Unless you're playing the zombies, then you should win, well, one out of every, uh, or nine out of every ten times, because they are brutal and ruthless. Players or AI to change sides mid-game? Here's something that popped into my mind that I think would be insane and so cool. I want to be playing as Spider-Man, and as I die, instead of that losing the scenario, I kind of want to turn into a zombie. Let me work against, or let me operate in a weird way. I should become a threat as the game progresses, because that's what happens in the comics. You get eaten, you get bitten, you get twisted, and then you go after the people who are just helping and supporting you. Sounds cool to me. Either way. Let's continue. The game has to be brutal. And I know it probably won't be blood and gore and bones ripping out of everything, but it needs to be on the edge of that. The comic books don't hold back in any way, shape, or form. You see every one of your favorite characters torn with flesh and blood and gore hanging out of them. There's one whole storyline where they begin digging into their own guts to pull out flesh of things that they've just eaten so they can reconsume it and continue uh, living and thriving. The hunger is insatiable. And so the artwork, the style, the design, the everything in this game should be just as unrelenting. It should be the most brutal version of Zombicide we've seen yet. And along with that, something to note, this game has to be hard. It needs to be. Don't hold people's hands going into this. We're fighting superheroes versus superheroes. This should feel world-ending, right? Taking down this guy, this should be a 1 in 20 chance. 
but it should feel fair and balanced, but still brutal to a T. The comic books don't apologize for how cataclysmic this is. Honestly, the zombie apocalypse is as if not more threatening than Galactus himself. So it has to be that way on the table. Let's continue digging in. The Necro Necro Necronomicon, the Book of the Dead. I want this as an Easter egg. It wasn't actually the thing that spawned the zombie apocalypse, but it'd be cool to have a book uh, that is fearing for its own life and working with you in some form, just an item in some shape or form. It'd be so cool to see that. Let's see here. Shooting zombies in the head doesn't kill them. Fun little side fact from the Marvel world. Magneto. I need a last man standing mode with Magneto. I want to be able to play as him, and I want the infinite rush scenario with a Magneto solo run. Magneto in the story is one of the last, or if not the very last person alive on one of these zombie fallen worlds. And so he has a showdown with every superhero, every creature, every ability, every system, and I want to be able to play that out, bring that to life on the table. We already talked about Zombies vs. Galactus, but one way they could make this game interesting in a player vs. you know, AI in some form is the only people who don't actually turn into zombies eventually throughout the course of the narrative are going to be the robots. We have Vision and we have Viv, which is going to be, I believe, his daughter. Uh, they're robots. They're fully sentient. They lose a little bit of their humanity, but they're not consumed. They just fight back. And we have people like the, F the Punisher or Frank Castle who convert their conscious and bodies into a robotic, a robotic, robotic cyber self, allowing them to remain alive and not succumb to the virus. And finally, for Easter eggs, I would love to see in this game... Uh, other than, of course, a quackalope, we need a Howard the Duck. We just need it. A zombie version. Whether or not you can play with it or not, we'll have a conversation about that later. But there is one in the comic books, and he does some damage. So I'd like to see that introduced. Doctor Doom should be in here. And I mean full-on pulled out. He doesn't want to support the movement at first. I'd love to see a feature here. Ash Marvel. This is really important throughout the entire original narrative. He's like the main figurehead who's journeying through. I want to see a playable version of him, Chainsaw and all, going head-to-head -head against these creatures. And then finally, Black Panther, but the harvested version. Just like they had a version of Loki that was consumed uh, repeatedly, Black Panther had the same thing happen to him. A leg missing arm kind of twisted, side cut off, but he survives, makes an escape, and does fairly well for himself. I'd love a little callback to, or Easter egg in there somewhere, highlighting some of these brutal and heart-wrenching comic book moments. So, there we have it. It's a list of things, theories, uh, ideas around where this has to go. I'm so excited about this title. And I think they can do it right. I've started to like Zombicide more and more the more I've dived into it and the better I've had uh, player groups and experiences with it. And this might be one of the best opportunities ever for, I mean, a world of people to fall in love with this style of gaming. They gotta do it right, though. It's gonna be a hard one to execute on. I'll be honest, if all I get is superheroes versus a bunch of random militant zombies, I'm going to be disappointed. We have to go zombie superhero against regular normal person. Cool. There's my theories based off of the comic book, based off of the lore, based off of the aesthetic. What do you think? What am I missing? What other Easter eggs would you like to see? And do you think my theory's right? Do we get to play as the zombies in this game? At least in some shape or form? If you're going to follow the comic book lore, you almost have to. But, who knows? We're stepping into the world of Zombicide and merging Marvel into it. I don't know which one takes more precedence. Is this a zombie apocalypse that 
zombie side lore has created, or is this the Marvel zombie bridging over into the zombie side world? We'll find out together slowly over time. Whatever the case, thank you for being here. Hit that subscribe button, leave a comment down below. Whatever you do, remember to do the important thing. Get out and consume some worlds. We'll see you next time. Thank you.